But now apart from the law, the righteousness of God has been manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all those who believe. For there is no distinction. Christ. Christ. The young person told me one time, they were all excited and they said, yes. Christ is all we need. And I said, young man, Christ is all we have. You have nothing else apart from Christ. Nothing. The word destitute should be frequent on your lips. Apart from him, I am destitute. I don't meet him halfway. I contribute nothing to my salvation but my sin. It's not 0.99% Jesus and or 99% Jesus and 1% you. If it was 1% you, you still go to hell because you fail in the 1% and so do I. It's all of Christ. And any religion that does not teach it that way is just a stinking vile rot a pharisaical hypocrisy pharisaical hypocrisy it is christ alone why did the preachers of old talk about plowing this is plowing this is telling you I have worked in many impoverished countries. I have worked in places where people were starving. If I laid a bologna sandwich into the hands of Bill Gates, he'd throw it on the ground. He has no need of it. He doesn't want a bologna sandwich. I put that same sandwich in the hands of some of the poor with whom I have worked, and they would fall down on their knees and kiss my hands. You don't want God, you don't need God because you don't see your need. And maybe even some of you have joined yourself to this Christian university just so somehow you'll reap a benefit from it, but Christ is not center in your life. And your condemnation will be greater. Greater than the prostitutes, that of the prostitutes and tax gatherers because you do not play with the name of the Son of God. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. All. And now Paul's going to make a turn in the passage. We turn to hope. Now he's talking to the Christian. He's already said, you cannot be right before God through your law, through your religion, through your church, through your religious affiliation, through your identification with some preacher or priest. All of that is rot. None of it works. None of it. None of it. None of it. Then he goes on to say, but being justified as a gift by his grace through the redemption, which is in Christ Jesus, the redundancy is intended. Being justified as a gift by his grace. He could have just said being justified as a gift or being justified by his grace. But he wants to be doubly sure you understand. What he's saying is, you are justified. It's a gift, 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 it's a gift. Why? Because men constantly want to say, it's my work, it's my work, it's my work. I earned it, I earned it, I earned it, I earned it. Being justified as a gift by his grace. What does it mean to be justified? It is a forensic term. It's referring to a legal position before God in which the moment the sinner trusts in Christ, he is not only pardoned of his sins, past, present, and future, but he is clothed in the righteousness of Christ. That perfect life that Jesus Christ lived, that always heard, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. That life, that righteousness, that personal righteousness of Christ is imputed to the one who believes and now forever he stands righteous before God in Christ. 
See, Christ is not only greater than Moses. He's, he's greater than Joseph. Joseph would not share his coat of many colors with his brethren. Jesus shares his coat of righteousness with all those who believe in him. He clothes them so that they stand perfect before God. If you're a Christian here tonight, your legal position before God is that of one who is righteous. In fact, God will not see you even more righteous in heaven. You are righteous in his sight because of what his son did for you.